What's going on everyone, it's Luke here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make one of the most overpowered and fun builds in Skyrim. Uh, you are going to need a few things, um, but this video will show you how to make it. Um, first of all, we're going to need a few skills uh, at a very high level. Um, enchanting at 100, um, and you're going to need 5 out of 5 enchanter, and then all of those skills, just the middle tree. And then you're going to want your smithing at either 90 or 100, depending on if you want Daedric or Dragon. I'm just using Daedric because it looks a lot better, I think, and it's stronger because it's heavy armor. And then you're going to want your alchemy at at least 80. And I will show you how to do all of those, um, but you're going to want Alchemist 5 out of 5, Physician, and then Benefactor. So I will quickly show you how to get all of those skills up to the level that you need. Um, and then basically that's going to help you create this crafting armor, which I will also show you how to do later on in the video once those skills are upgraded. So stay tuned and let's do this. So most of these can actually be done fairly early in the game um, just by going around and collecting the materials you need um, just by regularly playing the game. And by the time you want to level up, you'll have a bunch of materials. So we'll start with smithing first. Basically, just what you want to do is make a bunch of jewelry. Um, I recommend making the gold necklaces and gold rings. Um, gold rings mostly because you get two for every one you do. And it only costs one gold ingot. Um, so with that said, you need a lot of gold ingots. Now, um, for every two gold ores, you get one gold ingot. So there is a gold mine up here at Kolskega Mine. Um, you'll find about 54 gold ores in there, um, and that is just southeast of Markarth. Um, so you can do that, and there are a couple more locations where you can find a bunch of gold ingots, which I will show you later on in the video. Um, however, there is another quick tip on finding some gold ore that is actually very, very helpful and will help you level up. Um, so if you go over here to Halt Stream Camp, uh, which is just north of Whiterun, um, you will find a fancy spell called Transmute Mineral Ore, and it's an alteration. Basically how it works is if you have any um, iron ore in your inventory, you will be able to transmute that into silver ore. As you see at the top left screen there, I just added silver ore to my inventory, and then if you do it again, that silver ore becomes gold ore. Um, so basically, if you have iron ore, <laughs> you can make gold ore, but obviously that's a really, really long process. Um, silver ore, however, is a lot easier to do because it's just one cast instead of two. Um, and there are actually silver ore mines in the game. Um, here at Carthswayson, there's actually a silver mine. Um, and then... At all, pretty much the merchant chests in Dawnstar, um, Mark, the one outside of Markarth, um, which I will talk about later on in the video, um, you can find silver ore, and then you can make that into gold ore, which helps. You can also buy silver ore from basically any of the um blacksmiths in the in skyrim uh they don't sell much but i mean every little helps there is also actually another mine you can get gold off from uh, it's not much but it's still a little bit uh the lost prospect mine here i think it has about three or four gold ore veins um so you can do that as well so next up i'm going to show you some locations to get actual gold ingots from instead of gold ore so, first stop is going to be the Shrine of Maroon's Dagon. Uh, you go here for the quest in Dawnstar for one of the Daedric quests. Um, and you can actually get about six or seven gold, ores, gold ingots from here. And then there's going to be another location later on, which is a an unmarked location. So, I will show you the location of that afterwards. So, let's go here and I will show you the gold ingot locations. Challenger is 
Okay, so the second location is actually just east of Windhelm. It is the unmarked location that I mentioned before. Um, the first time you go here, you'll have to actually walk there. Um, but once you've been there, you can get this uh, map icon and it'll be a lot easier. Uh, so I'll just go there and show you now. Okay, so I believe this location does have about six gold ingots. Um, basically what you want to do is you just want to pass all of these bandits and just jump into the water straight ahead. Just ignore them. I mean, you can kill them if you want to, but you don't need to. Keep going this way. And... This location and the Shrine of Maroon's Dagon do actually respawn quite fast. So what you can do is you can go grab the gold ingots and then go do a quest or something. Maybe level up a bit. And then you can come back to both of those locations and refill up your gold ingots again. So that way, when you actually want to level up, you have way more materials to work with. Which, is, which makes this a lot easier and a lot better. And that flag is where we want to be. I don't know if there will be any gold ingots here this time because I've already looted this place. Yeah, so they will be just along here. And there is actually also a skill book here. Uh, I believe it's called Beggar. Um, I think that levels up your sneak ability. Um, but yeah, like I said, this location does respawn quite fast as well as the shrine. Um, so it's just about here on your map. Oh, it's actually... Just above the Solstheim thing, but yeah, that's where it is in relation to Windhelm. And once you've got as many gold ingots and gold ore as you can, you're going to want to make sure you have the the Guardian Stones on, uh, the Warrior Stone to be exact, because it will help level up your smithing that much faster. Um, another tip, if you do have Skyrim Special Edition, um, or you have the DLCs if you're playing on PS3, which is, I'm guessing, unlikely by now, uh, you're going to want to have the Ethereal Crown, um, because it lets you use two standing stone abilities. Now, I use that to level up my abilities way quicker. Um, I always had one of the one of the guardian stones on, and then I had the lover stone, which actually helps all skills increase by fifteen percent. You can actually have both of those skills on at once if you use the ethereal crown. And then to make things even better, if you sleep in a bed that you own, you can get skills up by ten percent which um, is a lot. <laughs> so it'll help things go way quicker um, for all of the skills, not just uh, the smithing, enchanting, and alchemy too. Um, so I do definitely recommend that. So basically, once you've done that, your smithing will be leveled up pretty quickly. Um, that smithing probably will take the longest, um, smithing or alchemy. Uh, enchanting really doesn't take that long, um, but I will show you how to do that next, so stay tuned. Okay, so next up is enchanting. So once you've made all of the jewelry from smithing, uh, you can actually just come over here to an enchanter's table and enchant it. Um, there's nothing more to it really, uh, that's why I said it's probably the easiest because you're going to be doing the smithing anyway. Um, so yeah, just all the jewelry, just put basically whatever enchantment you want on it and then uh, you can get soul gems from I just recommend collecting all the soul gems you can and then doing that and as long as you have the mage stone on from the guardian stones and if you have the ethereal crown you can use the lover stone as well uh, yes your, your enchanting will uh, will skyrocket basically and it's it's really fast you'll get to 100 in no time and you can also get soul gems from the merchant chest in dawnstar and there's also a merchant chest in markarth just outside of markarth and i can make separate videos showing you that but i'm pretty sure everyone knows where those are by now so yeah that is um enchanting and then alchemy alchemy is probably the most tough to level up it's definitely the most tedious which is why i only leveled it up to 80 basically what you're going to want to do uh for really 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 fast alchemy is get giant's toes Creep clusters and wheat. I know very random items, but basically any giant, any giant camp. Just as soon as you're able to kill giants, and you'll get giant toes. 
Uh, there's a giant when you're on the way to White Run for the first time. He'll show up just outside of Pelagia Farm. Um, and then basically when you're strong enough, you can just kill giants at any camp and they will give you one giant's toe. So farm those for sure. And then around this marsh area, uh, just um, just south of Kynesgrove and just south of Windhelm, you're going to find creep clusters. I'll show you what they look like. Okay, and this is a creep cluster. So you'll basically want to find all of these around the area. There's a bunch scattered around um, this kind of swamp area, the, the hot springs area. So you'll just want to collect a bunch of those. Uh, you'll find a lot. I think I found 45 once in one, uh, in one run. And then next up is wheat. Wheat's probably one of the easiest to get because it's... It, it just you can get so much so yeah any farm basically I'm here at the um, the farms just beside sky uh, white run um, and then yeah there's a bunch over here near Windhelm uh, these two they both have wheat as well uh, and then I know there's some wheat up by this farm just outside of solitude uh, catless farm and there's definitely more um, but those are the main areas um, so yeah, wheat, wheat's not really hard to get. Okay, and so once you've gathered all of those ingredients, you're going to want to come to an alchemy lab. And if you have your, uh, thief stone on, and if you have the ethereal crown, do that. This will help things go so much faster. So, what you're going to want to do is make a potion from all of those. The wheat, the giant stone, the creep cluster, and it's going to be potion of fortify health. And as you can see from below... Uh, it's it's very fast. I don't even think I have my thief stone on so it does go really really quickly um, Obviously, it's kind of tedious to get the ingredients, but once you do it um, It's it's really fast. There's also another thing you can do uh, which will definitely help speed this along and I actually did this So once you make all those potions those potions will be sat in your inventory and it's actually worth quite a lot of money so what you can do up to level 75 you can use Arcadia to train. Well, she can't. She can't train me right now. But um, up to level 75, she can train you uh, up to five times per level. So what you can do is you can level up with Arcadia, then do make the potions until you level up, and then train with her again. And she keeps the money in her inventory. So once you sell the potions to her, you basically get all your money back. Maybe not all of the money back, but you definitely get most of it back because those potions are worth quite a bit. So um, that will help speed things along. Like I said, you only need to get your alchemy to level 80 um, minimum. Uh, so it shouldn't take you too long, but as you can see, the potions level up alchemy very quickly. So um, it does help for sure. Okay, so once you've got all those skills up, the enchanting, the smithing, and the alchemy you'll be able to start making a crafting armor. Now, I recommend disenchanting items that have either major or extreme or peerless of the enchantment that you want because then the base level will be so much higher. So as you can see, my alchemy automatically is at 25. So alchemy and smithing, definitely you're going to want... Um, either major or extreme disenchantment because it's going to make the base so much higher and as well as destruction um, that's really important too so basically what you're going to want to do is just get a gold necklace a gold ring um, any circlet uh, it doesn't have to be gold and then leather braces um, now obviously I do have the crafting gear I'm just going to quickly show um, everyone what to do so um, I've not got any armor on right now um, so this is base level enchanting um, with the 5 out of 5 enchanting so we'll start off with alchemy we'll go grand soul gem for the necklace for the ring and I don't believe you can do it for the braces oh you can awesome okay so now that we've got that we can put all of the stuff that we just crafted on so that we can start making the potion that we need 
Okay, so so we start off with just alchemy, and then you come over here, and you want to make a an fortify enchanting potion. Now that's with blue butterfly wings and snowberries. Both of those can be found really easily throughout the world. So you'll want to make one or two, and you can see there in the right hand side that it's 28% stronger. So now we want to repeat that process after using the fortify enchanting potion. Now this is my this is my one that I made um, with my my full and uh, my full crafting gear on, so it is a bit stronger than this. As you can see, the amounts are only tiny, um, so you don't have to do this second step. You can just make this first one your crafting armor. Um, but if you do make this one your crafting armor, don't forget to put smithing on this because we'll want smithing as well, and that's part of the part of the thing that we want. So. Make a couple just to be safe, um, and then we can start making the second rounds. Okay, so we're gonna start with the gold necklace. So it we will want alchemy in local politics. and smithing and grand soul gem, and then we'll want the ring, smithing Someday the and alchemy, the Nords. and then we I will do work as circlet alchemy, and you can't do smithing on that, so we'll just do the alchemy and then we'll just pop another potion just to be safe what and we'll go back in a lifetime. and we Several will make your the leather braces we're gonna want alchemy and smithing and that's it we just made the crafting armor so I will show you really quickly and as you can see 28% more powerful the same as my original crafting gear 28% more powerful and it's as simple as that now you have crafting gear okay so once you've made this crafting gear then you can go on to make your actual Daedric armor set or dragon armor set whatever you want by basically just doing the same process as we did once your crafting gear is on make the alchemy potion of fortify enchanting and then use the arcane table over here to put pretty much any enchantment that you want on the daedric armor um, so as you can see here most of them do take destruction obviously you can't put them on all of the pieces but the ring and the necklace you can put um, both destruction on and then you can put it on the helmet and the armor piece now once you get to 100 that's it no destruction spells will cost anything um, so that's the main goal of this but your gauntlets and your boots, you can't put anything to do with magic on it. Well, you can, but it's there's no real point because you're already going to be at 100 with the other pieces of armor. So I just put one-handed and bows for my gauntlets and stamina and the muffle enchantment for the boots because it makes the armor extra awesome. So once you get to 100, that's the end goal. You've made, you've made the, um, the best armor in the game for this build and then you can do any destruction spell with no magic cost so including the master spell so take a look here as you can see costing nothing for me to cast no magicka reduction so that is the end goal. Now, after I'd built this armor, I think my destruction magic was probably at 75. Um, this is also a great way to level up your magic. Obviously, because there's no magic cost, you can do it for as long as you want, for as much as you want. Um, and then once you have the 100% magic reduction, you don't need any of these skills, because even if it is half of the magic, it's still going to be 100% reduction anyway. So... I've just put on the novice so I could get the destruction dual casting because it looks better um, and it's just more fun that way. Um, and you can really quickly level your destruction up this way. Um, as long as you put on the mage stone, your magicka will rise really fast with this. So once you got the 100 magicka, then you can get the master spells and that's, that's pretty much the goal. Um, so... 
that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to show some uh, gameplay um, of just of this armor in the works. Um, if you do prefer a 100 build or 200 build or maybe an archery build, you can still do this method with the crafting armor. And instead of putting the magic on, you can just enchant it with the one-handed and the or the the two-handed enchantments instead and it'll be it'll be built to your play style i've just chosen to do the magic because i just think it's a lot more fun but thanks for watching guys um i will see you in the next video so